Hello. This video will show you the difference between competitive labor markets and a monopsony labor market. In a competitive labor market, there are many buyers and many sellers of labor. Under monopsony, in the pure form, there is just one buyer of labor. So let's set up the market conditions. Labor supply is going to be represented by the wage W equals 20 plus 5L. W is just the wage and L is units of labor. And labor demand, market labor demand conditions are going to be represented by the marginal revenue product equals 100 minus 5 times L. MRP is the marginal revenue product of labor. The marginal revenue product of labor. And that, you may have learned, is nothing more than the labor demand curve. For example, if we were to graph these equations, putting units of labor down here and the wage up here. The marginal revenue product equation, the labor demand equation, looks something like this. So if L is 20, marginal revenue product is 0. When L is 0, marginal revenue product is 100. So that's our labor demand equation. And if we were to graph the labor supply equation, got a vertical intercept over here, doing something like that. Okay, so that's our labor supply equation. I'll just rewrite the equation there. The competitive outcome is given by this equilibrium, where supply intersects demand. So that's the first thing we're going to do. We're going to find the competitive outcome. And we're just going to set marginal revenue product equal to the wage. So 100 minus 5 times L equals 20 plus 5L. And we get 10L equals 80 or L equals 8. And maybe we're measuring units of labor in thousands. Okay, so the equilibrium quantity of labor is 8. And the equilibrium wage Let's just go ahead and plug this 8 back into either equation. So W equals 20 plus 5L, where L is 8. We get $60. So that is a competitive outcome. Now under monopsony, The monopsonist is going to uh, maximize profits by hiring the quantity of labor consistent with this condition. The marginal revenue product equal to the marginal cost of labor. Some books will refer to the marginal cost of labor as the marginal factor cost. Okay, so marginal cost of labor, marginal factor cost, uh, you can use them interchangeably here. So the trick is to find this marginal cost of labor, this marginal factor cost. How are we going to do that? Let me go down here a little bit. From the firm's perspective, the total cost of labor TC subscript L, the total cost of labor, is simply the wage times the number of workers. Well, what is the wage? It's 20 plus 5L, so I'm going to take that 20 plus 5L and plug it into the firm's total cost of labor function. And now I'm just going to simplify this a little bit. 
So 20L plus 5L squared. Now to get a marginal something, it usually involves taking a derivative, so we're going to take the derivative of the total cost of labor to get the marginal cost of labor. Let me sneak over here. The marginal cost of labor, MC subscript L for short, is the derivative of the total cost of labor function with respect to labor, and so we get 20 plus, bring down to 2 here, 10L. One thing you'll note here, uh, and it's just a good check on your math, is that the marginal cost of labor, this function will look exactly like the supply equation, but it'll have a slope that is twice as steep. So notice that this is 20 plus 5L, this is 20 plus 10L. Okay, so that's a shortcut from going to the labor supply equation to the marginal cost of labor equation or marginal factor cost equation. Just take your labor supply equation and rewrite it but with a slope that is twice as big. Okay, now we're ready to basically finish up this problem by setting the firm's marginal revenue product equaling, uh, set that equal to the marginal cost of labor. So the marginal revenue product is 100 minus 5L equals 20 plus 10L solving for L. Uh, we get L equals, uh, looks like 5.33. So that is how many workers a monopsonist will hire. And monopsonies, you may have learned, will restrict hiring in order to keep wages artificially low. So what is the wage? The wage is going to be, plugging this 5.33 back into the labor supply equation. Okay, we're going to take that 5.33 and plug it back into the labor supply equation, which was 20 plus 5L. What is L? 5.33. We get a wage of $46.67. That is the monopsonist wage. The monopsonist is a price searcher, not a price taker. Going to our diagram then, if we were to graph the marginal cost of labor, it's going to have a slope that's twice as steep. Okay. Go up a little higher. So that's 20 plus 10L. What we did was we found this intersection, and we found that it coincides with 5.33 workers. What is the wage? We plug that 5.33 back into the supply equation. Not back into the marginal cost of labor equation, but back into the supply equation. Come across, we got the $46.67. So this is how you solve a monopsony type problem. I hope you found this beneficial.